Hello, welcome to this World Plan Day talk where I am Victor Fernandez de Alba. I will talk about uh, the new Plown front end strategic package flow called at Plown Components. Uh, this package lives in the Volto repository, in the Volto monorepo. It's part of the monorepo, and you can find it in, in the Volto repository packages components. Uh, folder and uh, you can uh, access to the uh, storybook, the current storybook uh, showcasing all the components that are inside this package. And you have here the link where it will lead you to this nice storybook where you can even, not even check but also try it out uh, in a live uh, mode the components themselves so what is plum components plum components is this is a package that uh, contains react js components for using plone as a headless cms these components aims to be very basic very fun fundamental so you can build other components out of them another uh, feature uh, that uh, these components have is that they are uh, silly so they are uh, they do not have any data fetching layer so you can uh, so they expect that you pass all the data that they will consume from the component from the parent components right this is also very important to guarantee that plum components it's used uh, it's it's not only uh, uh, it doesn't carry on any other burden and you don't have to set up any difficult uh, data fetching infrastructure to make them work. So they will work either way. You only have to provide the correct data uh, as props to these components. This is very important because Plum Components is part of the uh, core uh, strategic packages, uh, the headless packages, and this core packages cannot have any other dependency over them. Uh, this, as I said, this warranty that you can use these clone components in isolation anywhere, so, and you don't need to carry on any other uh, dependency. So you can uh, use clone uh, components today. So this is an experimental package still, but uh, it has the seen the light uh, uh so it's been released uh, as a with a standard uh stable version the 1.x uh, series and nowadays it's on the alpha stage for the 2.x series where these we are polishing and we are completing uh these uh components Plum components is based on another library this library is react area components is uh is maintained by Adobe. Adobe has a specific group of people, a team uh, for working on this library and other libraries that, uh, that they also open source, but specifically in, uh, in React Area Components and React Area. React Area is a, a library that provides uh, hooks to make your components accessible, and React Area Components uses those hooks to build these basic layer of components. What we are doing in Plum Components is to adopt all the components present in React Area and adding a layer of our own customizations to make easy to being used in our projects. Uh, you can use them to uh, have blown uh, behind, but you can use them in any other use case on any other uh, project that you have. It doesn't have to be blown. Since, as we said at the beginning, Plum Components is uh, thought to be used in isolation without having anything else into account. You install it by adding, using your, the uh, package manager that you all have, that you are using in your project, Yarn, PMPM, NPM, whatever, uh, add Plum Components, and you use it like this. So, for example, the text field you import as a name import from plum components and then you can use uh, the component 
right away in your projects. So Plum Components also provides a thin layer of CSS. Nowadays, this thin layer of CSS is also thought so you can uh, extend and add your own uh, layer of styling above it, or you can simply remove this uh, thin layer, add your own to match your requirements in your project. It's so thin that it only takes some uh, few lines of code for every component. It does the essential styling that the component needs and anything else, any, any fancy thingy. So all only vanilla CSS enough for the component to be, to look uh, presentable. And uh, yeah, you get them all as with an import. So you can import plum components, this basic CSS. Or you can do that also selectively. You, you can say import plum components as a C styles basic, and then you only import the component that you're using. Because we think that this is also very important that you don't have to bring all the CSS for all the components if you are only using one of them, right? So you can chirurgically go and say, no, I only want the CSS and use it in my project. Uh, how about Quanta? Um, Plone components provide a, a bunch of components that are a specific customization over the default ones. So it's yet another layer of styling above this vanilla basic essential CSS that we're providing. And we are uh, giving the Quanta flavor to these components. We only have, uh, I think, three of them. We will look. We, we can take a look at them in a in a moment. But it's uh, yeah, complementing this basic essential CSS with the Quanta ones. And what will you do? You will import the basic, and afterwards you will import the Quanta, the Quanta ones. And you can also selectively say, no, I want the Quanta flavor for the text field only, and that it will work like this. Right. Let's take a quick look uh, at them. So we are using a palette of colors uh, by default, which is, as you can say, very basic. It's almost black and gray, uh, white, black, and gray. And uh, we use this palette across all these vanilla CSS, essential, basic, fundamental CSS that these components have. And these colors are uh, customized customizable via CSS custom properties. So you don't even have to write CSS for uh, customizing it. You just uh, go and modify these, uh, these CSS custom properties in your own code, and it will adapt uh, themselves. So we have the colors. We have the quanta colors as well, just to make sure that they are there and you can use them. And we have the quanta icons by default in there. So you don't have to uh, come up with a different set of icons in your projects. We have the quanta icons in there. You can use them as you used to use the uh, Volto icons in Volto. This is its own icon component that you call uh, when you use that icon, right? For example, this one. Then let's take a look at the list of components. We, we, uh, we differentiate them for, uh, using by uh, general components or uh, bullet slots, uh, widgets, and forms, and then the quanta ones. Right? Uh, we can see that there are uh, lots of them. As I said at the beginning, they are a customization of the React Area Components one. And you can use them. For example, this is the grid list. You can have a grid of uh, elements that are, uh, have a, a checkbox, or uh, you can have a dialog box, right? Uh, the button that pops uh, a dialog box, or you can have a menu. You, have, you can have different flavors of this menu, no icons with texts with icons, with an icon, with separators, right? 
and you can have also with section. So everything that React Data Components supports, Plone Components support, right? Have popovers. I mean, you, you grab the idea. Everything that a uh, set of uh, React basic components library uh, have out there nowadays, we have it in here. And we have uh, widgets, we have a calendar widget that it's fully accessible. So remember this, so since we are based in React Area Components, all these, all these components are accessible 100%. And the Adobe team that it takes care of it, makes sure of it. So we don't have to do literally anything to make these components accessible. Check those group. We have even a date picker, right? And uh, radio bloop. Yeah, you can you can access here to the storybook and play with it. Have the most basic ones. This is this a select field, and finally we have the quanta one. So we have the quanta flavored uh, select the text area field and the text field, right? It doesn't. Yeah, we have this is the classic uh, quanta. Uh, input that we have available here, which is, as I said before, is a customization already above the default one, the default text area field from Plum Components. Let's do, uh, after this presentation, let's do a quick uh, hands-on that I want to show you to demonstrate that this can be used today in Plum. So, the, I want this to be clear. So Plone Components, you can use it in your projects, even in Volto, right? So let's do one exercise. Let's get the quanta, this component, the quanta input, and let's make Volto use this input for all its inputs, right? So in Volto, you know that we have a component registry, and this component registry, uh, we can modify it to uh, provide our own set of components. Let's take a look where it is. So in Volto, we have Volto here. We go to Volto config and we go to the widgets. And in this file, we are setting every widget that Volto uses depending on an ID or the name of the widget, or depending on other uh, use cases. And we have the default one. The default one is this default widget. And that by default, if a widget does not have any, any specific uh, widget set by ID, by type of widget, by uh, other uh, consideration, it will use this one. So let's modify this one in our add-on configuration and let's make use the quanta one. Um, how we do that? We will do that in my uh, own personal site code. We have it here. I have uh, it running, the back end and the front end. And this is the configuration of my site. And what I will do is I will uh, do this. I will... Um, yeah, let me find my code and we will say config at the end. We will say widgets, default widget. And we will say that it will be this one. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. And let's also import it. So we will use the import as we saw before. So we will import a uh, quanta text field from add clone components, right? And we will go here and we will tell the configuration that for the default component, it will use this uh, field. This is complaining because I, this is not a TSX file, now it is a TSX file. Note that I am redefining what's in the default and I am telling it that it should use the quanta text field 
which is from plum components. But I have to do a small adaptation because, of course, uh, the widgets in Volto have different properties than the ones in Plum Components. So we need a small layer of adaptation to make them work. And this layer of adaptation is, OK, I will pass you all the props that I am getting from Volto, but QuantaTextField expects the title to be in a prop name label. It expects also to have a placeholder, which I will, we will provide here. And the most important one is that the on change. So the on change uh, prop in the quanta text field are different than the ones uh, coming from Volto itself. So we will have to do this small adaptation and say, OK, instead of calling directly the on change, do this small adaptation so two props have the same can understand each other, let's say. So let's save it. And let's take a look at uh, my site. Let's see if that made the trick. And let's edit it. And take a look at here. We have another text field, not the normal one that we have, but it's worked out. What happens? Oh, we forgot the CSS. So as as I show you here in the beginning, Plum Components comes with a basic CSS that we have to load both the basic and the quanta ones. And we will do that anywhere in our code. Uh, we will do this in here. So we will load it as a side effect. And as soon as we have the CSS, oh, we have the full blown, blown uh, the inputs from Quanta in Volto today. So only to make sure that you grab this concept. I mean, we could write Quanta today. We had the time, right? We all, it's, it's there, but of course it looks weird because it needs some adaptation and blah, blah. But this is completely uh, functional and it works, right? So yeah, I wanted to make this, uh, this uh, demo because it's quite impressive what we are able to do today, right? And it demonstrates that, yeah, we have a long way to go with Plum Components, but we're laying out the foundations, not only to use this set of components outside Volto and for other projects in the Hetel CMS way, but also at, it will be a point that we will be able to backport them and use them in, in Volto themselves. And that we can use them in Volto today. So nobody is holding us from that because Plum Components is compatible with Volto today. We saw that we need some small adaptation because the props doesn't match, of course, and the widgets in Volto work a little bit different than the widgets in Plum Components, but it's a matter of retouching and making some adaptation layers for that. Okay, and that's it. Let's wrap it up. Thanks for uh, looking at this talk and see you soon.